welcome. Uh, this is a course on dealing with uh, materials data. We are going to discuss all aspects of uh, dealing with materials data. We are going to talk about collection of data, analysis of data and interpretation of data even though not necessarily in that order. Uh, this course has two parts. One is the statistical concepts associated with uh, data analysis and interpretation. The other one is uh, hands on part uh, which we will do using the R programming language. So, for this course I will be teaching the R part of the course. So, we will take uh, as much as possible data from material science and engineering and we will try to deal with that using the R programming language. And the concepts that are needed to uh, deal with the data will be taught by the other instructor, Professor Hina Gokhale. So, let us start with uh, uh, the first module. This module is an introduction to R. So, in this module, we want to introduce the R programming language and we want to give a hands on tutorial introduction to R. And for examples, we will use materials data as far as possible. So, there are plenty of reading material for R that is available. The first one is the R project website uh, www.rproject.org. Uh, this website has uh, plenty of information about the R project itself. And uh, the R manuals are available at uh, the cran.rproject.org under the manuals.html page. Uh, there are uh, many references and some of them are very exhaustive, some of them are meant for developers. Uh, but what I have in mind specifically is an introduction to R and this is available at the cran.rproject.org. There are also many free books of excellent quality that are available. If you go to the manuals.html page for example, there are also user generated uh, uh, manuals, uh, the, there is a link which you can go and look at uh, the material that is available. And there are uh, many people who have written uh, small introductions or specific things how to get it done using R and this information is available. And some of them are of excellent quality and they are also freely available. For example, there is a book by uh, Rafael Irizari called Introduction to Data Science and uh, you can download this book for free. Uh, if you feel like you can also pay the author for taking the pains for writing this book. Uh, but uh, if it is not affordable for you, it is not uh, uh, in your budget at this moment, you can freely download this book and use. So, there are plenty of reading material that is available online and uh, some of them are from authentic sources like the R project website or R manuals. So, I strongly recommend that you try to use some of these uh, uh, reading material in addition to the tutorial introduction that you are going to get uh, from this course uh, from these modules. There are also plenty of other R resources. R documentation is uh, one of the best resources that is available and that is always available. So, in the R console you can just look for help and you can uh, get the required help and I am going to show you how to do that in, in this uh, module. And there are lots of online forums and discussion boards uh, such as Stack Overflow where lots of uh, uh, details are discussed. Uh, of course, uh, these online forums and discussion boards are useful uh, once you have some familiarity with R and you can understand the solution that uh, is given or the kind of questions that are being asked. So, in order to understand you may have to have some familiarity with R. If you have then uh, these online forums and discussion boards are very useful and they can answer specific questions, uh, specific problems that you have even if it is not part of this course or even if it is not part of any course, uh, then you can actually go find some help and using that you will be able to solve your problems. And of course, the, there are lots of books on data science and R and uh, we are not going to use uh, any of them in this course. Uh, but those of you who are more uh, uh, data science minded and are interested in uh, applying these concepts to material science and engineering should take a look at some of these books also. So, um, so having said that there are plenty of resources and reading material that is available. Uh, what is it that uh, we want to do? So, in this module, 
I want to give a tutorial hands on introduction to R and I am having students of material science and engineering in mind. This is because if you go to the R manuals for example and the user generated manuals if you look at many of these manuals are prepared for specific fields. For example, there are people who have looked at social sciences or geography or biology and how to solve problems in these areas um, in terms of analyzing the data and interpreting the data and uh, presenting the data and uh, uh, graphically describing the data and, and things like that. So, for that the, the, the tutorials are written, but there is nothing that uses uh, material science and engineering problems as the example case. So, that is the first um, aim of this module to give a tutorial hands on introduction. It is a tutorial introduction because it is no means a complete introduction to R. There are like I said lots of reading material and other material that is available and uh, so you should take help of those material. This will just give you whatever is required to solve the problems that we have at this point and how to do it uh, using R. So, it will be hands on. So, as much as possible uh, when I am teaching the course I will open an R console or R studio window and I will uh, type the commands so that uh, you can also have your uh, laptop or computer uh, with uh, R open and uh, you can also work along with uh, uh, these uh, tutorials. So, you will have uh, uh, hands on uh, experience with R. The emphasis is on materials data. Uh, there are very few courses that use materials data sets as examples or discuss the statistical concepts with examples from material science and engineering. So, we are going to emphasize on this part and uh, this is also uh, lots of value addition uh, because uh, to collect these data and to put them in one place and use them as example will also help you analyze your own data when you generate uh, because you will be familiar uh, with the similar data and similar kind of analysis that you can do on them. So, the emphasis is uh, A on tutorial hands on introduction, B on using materials data. Uh, like I said this module is by no means complete, uh, there are several online courses uh, including NPTEL MOOC courses, uh, there are uh, 2 or 3 of them uh, uh, from uh, IIT Bombay itself, from IIT Kanpur and IIT Madras. So, it will be useful for some of you to who are interested in learning more about R to go to some of these courses. In addition of course, there are also courses at Coursera and edX that are available and I strongly recommend that as you are learning R in this course in a tutorial hands on way, uh, you should also try to do some of these other courses and bring in some of the expertise and knowledge on R that you gain from these courses uh, to your own data analysis for material science and engineering. So, what is R and why are we using R? R is a programming language uh, specifically meant for statistical analysis and data visualization and this is the part I want to emphasize uh, because you will find uh, that uh, programming languages like uh, Python also for example can do most of what we are doing. But our emphasis is on statistical analysis and uh, um, interpretation and visualization of data. So, R is a programming language which is specifically meant for uh, such statistical analysis. So, we are going to use R. It is an interpreted language and not compiled by that what we mean is that you can open an R console and you can give commands and you will immediately get the reply or, or the computation done and the answer given to you. Uh, so, there is no need like if you are writing a program uh, in, in C programming language for example, you have to compile get an executable and that executable has to run to give you the uh, answer that you are seeking, but that is not needed. In this sense uh, R is more like uh, GNU Octave uh, or MATLAB if you have used uh, or Scilab, there are several such uh, uh, languages that are available. And uh, so, they are easy to work with and uh, they are also very powerful as you would see. Another advantage of R that you will see is that it is available for all operating systems uh, specifically for Linux, Mac and Windows. Uh, in this course I am going to use Linux operating system, um, but if you have a Mac or Windows you will be easily able to uh, use R on these operating systems also. 
There is a nice integrated uh, development environment IDE called R Studio, and uh, so I am going to be using R Studio also in this course. Uh, so I am going to um, use both R console and R Studio uh, to, to give you a flavor of both and to tell you how to deal with uh, uh, both this. Uh, of which R Studio is uh, more powerful and uh, more complete. Uh, it, it has several panes. I, I'll, I'll show it to you. And uh, R is just the console, and uh, so it is uh, minimalist, but it is also equally powerful. So it can do uh, things that that R Studio can do. And uh, for example, uh, using R Studio is how I have prepared these slides. Uh, so R Studio can work with uh, things like uh, LaTeX and produce presentations and uh, I am also preparing documentation for what I am teaching using R studio. So you will see the documents also prepared using um, tech and all of this is done using R studio. So it is a really integrated uh, development environment. Uh, so you can uh, use it as a text editor, you can use it to prepare documents, you can use it to prepare uh, uh, the, the scripts. You can use it to prepare the script and document together and then you can decide to use only the script or only generate the document. So all sorts of possibilities are there uh, and so you will see some examples of that. So we are not going to spend too much time on how to do that. Uh, but like I said, there are enough material uh, once you are familiar with uh, this uh, for you to go and explore and learn. So specifically in this course, we are going to use R and R Studio on the Linux operating system. Specifically, I am using Ubuntu 18.04 uh, long term support version. Um, there is one more resource which is very useful. This is called Spoken Tutorials and uh, if you look up online for Spoken Tutorials uh, for R, uh, this is also maintained uh, by somebody from IIT Bombay, Professor Kandan Maudgalya and his group. So you will find that uh, how to install R for example and how to use and uh, these are spoken tutorials in the sense that you will see instructions being given to you. And so I strongly recommend that you also uh, utilize this resource, uh, look it up and uh, learn more about uh, R, R Studio, uh, the other aspects like installation for example, which is not uh, part of what we are going to do. I am going to assume that you have R, R, R Studio installed on your operating system and uh, that you are a uh, little bit familiar with how to work with them and uh, so I am going to just uh, uh, start. Okay. So what is the first thing we want to do? So here is a quote uh, from uh, uh, Alice in Wonderland. The white rabbit put on his spectacles, where shall I begin please your majesty he asked. Begin at the beginning, the king said gravely and go on till you come to the end, then stop. Okay, so what does that mean? We want to have the first session, I want to call it A to Z of an R session. So we want to create a directory, we want to invoke R from that directory, we want to check the version of R and we want to write the first program which is the hello world program and then we want to quit R. right? So if you can go to a directory, open R, do something, close and come out. So that is the first session that we want to do and that session has a beginning how to invoke R and it has something in the middle how to write your first program and it also tells you how to end the R session. So this is the very first introductory session I want to have. So let us do that and like I said, I have also prepared the uh, the, the notes for these sessions and they are written like this and like I said they are prepared using the R uh, itself using R studio. So this will be available to you uh, at the uh, MOOC website. Uh, but now what we are going to do? So we are going to start uh, doing this. So what is the first thing we want to do? We want to uh, prepare a directory, right? So I want to go to um, Okay. So I want to make a directory called dealing with materials data. So this is the command in uh, Linux uh, to uh, make a directory mkdir. Of course, if you are uh, using uh, Windows machine or even on Linux, if you are on the X windows, uh, you can right click 
uh, prepare a new folder and name it as uh, dwmd and so on. So, let us go to this directory and we want to invoke r from this. So, invoking r uh, uh, or getting an r console means simply typing r and entering. And when you enter you see that this is the R version that I am using 3.6.1. So, I strongly recommend that you also use this version so that there will be compatibility in terms of versions what I am doing and what you will see. And this uh, version of uh, 3.6.1 is called action of the toes and uh, so, so it tells you something about R and uh, we are ready. So, we want to write the first program and the first program is of course to print uh, hello world. So, let us do that. As you can see, it is rather straightforward in R uh, to print. So, it is almost like English, uh, print hello world means uh, print hello world, right. So, we say print hello world. Uh, so, uh, there is a, a parenthesis, right, and what you want to print is uh, given within quote marks, and so let us put a bang, so hello world, okay. So, let us enter and R gives the answer immediately hello world. You said print hello world, so it has printed hello world. And this is how it will appear in the documentation also. You will see for example, the command that I want to give is given like this. Uh, this is the command and the answer that R returns is given with this uh, hash mark in, the, uh, in these uh, nodes. Uh, so, that is how I have described everything in this uh, notes. So, the commands will be shown and sometimes the answers uh, that are with generate will also be shown. So, you can do it for yourself and confirm that you are getting the same answer. And uh, these, uh, um, uh, uh, these markers, uh, uh, the, the greater than kind of symbol that you see that is the uh, prompt. Uh, so, that is never uh, typed and that is already there. So, now that we have done, uh, we want to quit and uh, of course, R is very helpful. So, it tells how to quit, type Q that is for quit and that is like a function. So, there is a parenthesis, but there is no uh, input and you say enter and uh, typically R asks, uh, do you want to save the workspace image? Um, you can say yes, uh, you can say no and you can say cancel. So, if you say cancel, then R uh, uh, does not quit. And if you say yes, then it will save the workspace image and quit. If you say no, it will not save. And if it saves the workspace image, uh, by default you can ask it to load it when you open R next time or uh, sometimes you can load it yourself manually. And it is also possible uh, that if you have already have it uh, loaded, uh, then you can also remove uh, those uh, uh, saved information and uh, that is done using this command unlink uh, within quote marks dot r capital D A T A data. So, you have to be very careful uh, the, the there is uh, the caps and the small letters. So, the commands are sensitive to capitalization. So, you need to use exactly capital R and capital D and the other letters are small. So, by using this, uh, suppose uh, you said, uh, so let us let us say no and I am going to quit and uh, it quits R. So, this uh, um, is the session on A to Z of an R session. Uh, but suppose if you said yes and it is stored and when you opened R, uh, right, next time when you say R, uh, so it does not say anything because we did not uh, uh, save. Uh, now, let us uh, redo this again. Let us say print hello world. Okay, so, I have printed hello world and I say quit uh, and it wants to save the workspace image. I say yes. Now, if I say R, um, so, so it will it will remember my previous commands like this, right. So, you do not want this to happen. So, you will say uh, unlink dot r data ok. So, then it will it will not have this uh, information from dot r um, the, 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 the previous session data uh, from r ok. So, let us do this and no ok. So, this is uh, the first session. Uh, so, we, we opened the session, we wrote the hello world program 
and uh, we uh, quit our session. Thank you.